Hi, I'm Kristen Soltis Anderson, co-founder of Echelon Insights, and it has been an honor to conduct the research framing today's conversation. The research was conducted in partnership with the Walton Family Foundation and aimed to better understand how young Americans think about opportunity and their futures. And for today's conversation, I'm going to be joined by two fellow millennials, Rebecca Rivas, the program director for the Latinx Theater Project in Northwest Arkansas, and Vidi Carizales, who is co-founder and CEO of M Schools. We'll be discussing how they personally and through their organizations are working to ensure that young Americans have the opportunity to have a better life. So while many people think of millennials and Generation Z as having a bleak future and a life that's going to be worse than the generations that came before them, our research findings suggest that young Americans think otherwise, that they're optimistic about their future despite challenges, and that for these generations, the dream is about having the freedom and opportunity to build the lives they want for themselves on their own terms. I want to start off and pose a question, and Rebecca, I'll start with you, but Vidi, I want to hear your answer to this too. As millennials yourselves, does this research resonate with you? What are your reactions to these findings that things might be brighter than they seem? Uh, sure. Uh, I was actually surprised. Um, I think I believed the hype a little bit um, and believed that it was bleak and <laughs> that um, what am I doing? It's just kind of a road to nowhere. Um, but then I kind of really started to evaluate and look at choices I've made in my life, choices friends have made in their lives, um, and realized that um, actually um, it's very, very true. I, I am making choices based on a belief that um, by doing something that is non-traditional, doing something not the way that maybe my parents did it or my grandparents did it, that um, I, I believe with all my heart and with every action I take each day that it's going to lead to um, a better future for myself um, and for others. So um, I think I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and, and it really um, made me take stock also of uh, my own privilege in that, in the ability to, to be able to just make a choice that is non-traditional because um, or um, and, and I think that that is, is, it's important to note that, that while yes, it's hopeful, I think for many that hope is, is harder to come by. And certainly in the research, we found that uh, millennials and Gen Zers are not of the mind that they're not facing any barriers. We found huge portions of young Americans think that things like access to health care and affordable higher education are barriers that stand in their way. Um, things like racial inequality also as a big barrier to, to an awful lot uh, of young people. But nonetheless, a sense of uh, having an ability to persevere and overcome those obstacles through uh, innovation, through hard work, through using your voice to, to bring about change. Vidi, what was your reaction when you saw this research? Yeah, no, it definitely resonated for me. I'm an immigrant in this country. The reason I'm even standing here today is because my parents believed of a version of the American dream, right? They came to this country to give us a better life, a better future, better access to opportunities that they didn't have. So in a way, every day I'm living that dream for my parents. And uh, while that is true, while I, I, I am in a position um, economically, I've been able to go to college, be the first one in my family to go to college, while all of that is true, um, the American dream for me has also meant family separations. It has meant deportations uh, as a formerly undocumented student. It has brought a lot of fear uh, and it has come at, at a big price, right? My parents left their home country, their language, their family members in pursuit of this better life. So I'm, I'm living with those two truths that yes, you know, I have better aspirations for myself. I recently became a mother and now I have even, even bigger dreams for my daughter and know that she will have a better life that I have right now. But uh, I, I feel like every day I have to pinch myself and recognize that I'm here because of the sacrifices that my parents made to, to make this dream a reality for me. So it definitely resonated. Well, Vidi, you work in the world of, of education, uh, or this is something that, that you deal with and experience. And in our survey, we found eight in 10 respondents said they think that having access to a high quality education is uh, extremely or very important to having a better life. Um, and in our research, we found that young Americans really think schools should be focused on teaching career and life skills in addition to uh, the academic skills that we think of so often. 
Is this something that you're hearing in the education sector among your peers? And are there successful examples around the country of schools you've worked with that are good at teaching those kind of career and life skills that can unlock opportunity? Yes, I completely agree that education is such a key factor in accessing better opportunities and having a better future, better life in this country. And um, I know it and the work that we do in education, many of the schools, many of the parents and the students that we have the pleasure of working with have expressed similar uh, sentiments, right? That school sometimes is very relevant. They don't have conversations around career options or life skills, things that they're going to utilize in their everyday life after they finish school or even after finishing college. So that's definitely something that I've seen come up in the education sector. Another reality is that while that is true, um, it is also very true that there are many inequities in our education system, right? Many of our students that we work with and we serve are part of uh, schools that are underfunded and undersourced. Many of our students don't have access to internships or don't have access to the type of jobs that many other students in affluent uh, communities do. So I think it's important for us to recognize the inequities that exist in education and that even though we might have a student who is able, like myself, who's able to go to college, able to graduate, for many undocumented students, they're not able to work um, even after having a, a college degree. So it is true, but I think it, it's also important for us to recognize the inequities that exist in education and the many things that all of us, right, from very different sectors have to do to make sure that all of our students, no matter where they come from, where they live, what their socioeconomic status is, have access to the education that they need and deserve to succeed in this country. Absolutely. And Rebecca, you come from the world of arts and culture, um, and those are so critical to a thriving community. A big piece of this research was trying to understand what do millennials and Gen Zers want out of the communities where they choose to live. Tell me a little bit about how millennials and Gen Zers are engaging in the arts community um, and what other regions and communities can do to get more young Americans engaged in the same. Sure. Well, I mean, I think that the uh, specifically the American theater, and I think actually across the board, um, there has been a real awakening um, that's taking that's hopefully taking place um, after um, George Floyd was killed. I think that a lot of um, a lot of a lot of different um, organizations began to, um, along with this uprising and this um, social shift. Um, people started realizing that saying is, is very different than doing. Um, and I think that um, we've been able to reflect and hopefully those reflections will turn into actions. Um, and, I, and I bring that up because I think it's such a huge part of how um, theater specifically and the arts across the board remain relevant. And in order for the arts to thrive, um, we have to keep bringing people in. And I think that the, at that millennials and certainly Gen Z um, have seen things and have lived lives in which we want um, we want authenticity in our in, in our stories. Um, and that means that the kind of the the stories that are often white white centered um, and are celebrated um, in the arts um, has that has to shift and change and become more inclusive. So you both work with organizations that uh, are working to ensure that young Americans are, have opportunity, have access to good education, have access to arts and culture. But there's so many other organizations across sectors that are also interested in this question of how do you create opportunity and a good life um, for people in the next generation? Given your experiences, what would your advice be or what would you call upon other organizations to do to make sure that they are doing as much as possible to make opportunity available to the next generation? Rebecca, we'll start with you. Um, I think that reevaluation process um, and looking at the many ways we do things, um, the, th the, the structures that are in place um, that we take for granted and we decide this is how it works and this is how it is always going to work. Um, really evaluating those and seeing is there oppression present in these practices? Um, and if there is, is there a better way to do it? And I think that that's something that um, these uh, generations are, are good at doing. I would, I would add that 
you know, some things that I've noticed is just like the lack of collaboration that exists between sectors and among sectors, especially when it comes to education. I feel, again, to our point that education is a key lever here. And uh, if we could only see more collaboration between business leaders, the business sector in our schools, the legal sector in our schools, the health sector in our schools, I think mm -hmm. that schools are really the place where we can connect our students to valuable experiences, resources, and, and I often see it as a missed opportunity. So I hope that there's uh, more collaboration among sectors. And you know, at the end of the day, we all have the same goal to see our students succeed um, so that we can all have a better future, better life. So I think if we can all work together to make that happen, um, we can probably get closer to that goal. Well, I think that is a beautiful note for us to end our conversation on. Fidi, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this has been a research project that's been very near and dear to my heart, uh, trying to sort of focus the conversation on making sure that there are no paths blocked, no doors closed to someone, uh, just because of where they were born or what they look like, that everyone has a chance to build the life that they imagine. Uh, we find in our research that that for so many millennials and Gen Zers is how they're imagining uh, the American dream. So again, thank you, Rebecca and Vidi, for joining this conversation and for your thoughtful insights. Thank you. And thank you to Aspen Ideas for having us and to view the full research report, you can visit waltonfamilyfoundation.org. Thanks so much. Thank you.